Hello students, I am Dinesh Udupi. This is uh, session 38 of uh, Molecular Biology, Evolution and Ethology paper. And uh, we already studied the isolating mechanisms in the speciation. So it is just a continuation and uh, a revision of what we studied in the last session. Uh, role of isolation in speciation. So we already understood what is speciation and uh, what are the different uh, isolating mechanisms which lead to the process of speciation, right? Uh, biologists today divide isolating mechanisms into two major categories based on whether they happen in different locations or a single location. Now, uh, so we already studied allopatric speciation and uh, sympatric speciation. So, you know, in the allopatric speciation, what happens, the, there is a barrier. So uh, normally there is a geographical barrier, which is going to separate the populations for a long time. So when uh, the populations are separated for a long time, so they will evolve into two different species. Whereas uh, two populations, I mean, the individuals which remain in the same place and which have the chance to interact with each other chance to interbreed with each other but still they get separated not physically not geographically but reproductively right even though they are present in the same area and they share the same place they will not mate there there will not be interbreeding between uh, one type of individual and another type of individual of the same group or same population so uh, that is called reproductive isolation. So we already studied what are the reproductive isolating mechanisms. And then it will lead to the speciation process. I mean, the uh, different species evolve, two different species evolve or more than two different species evolve from the same population which are living in the same area. That is uh, from different locations and uh, from a single location. Don't get confused what we studied in the previous session uh, in the form of allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation the same thing uh, we are talking here this is what uh, i just explained to you allopatric speciation which occurs due to the geographical barrier separating two populations whereas sympatric speciation is due to the reproductive barriers uh, which separate the individuals and uh, which lead to the speciation process. Now, uh, let us just to uh, summarize, allopatric speciation involves geographical barriers which physically isolate populations, right? As I told you, we are just revising, right? Uh, what we already studied in the previous session. Barriers to mating and barriers to development of zygotes can both cause reproductive isolation. So this is uh, what we talk about the sympatric speciation. Experiments with fruit flies support the possibility that geographic isolation can lead to reproductive isolation. You know, uh, theories are different. So allopatric speciation theory can be supported by some experiments. And uh, there is one experiment which is conducted on the fruit flies, uh, which suggested that geographical isolation can lead to reproductive isolation, right? That means uh, when the two populations are separated geographically for a long time, they also get separated reproductively. You remember, ultimately, it is a reproductive isolation which is going to divide the population into two different species, right? So geographical separation is the initial cause which will result in the reproductive isolation and because of the reproductive isolation they evolve into two separate species so that's what uh, you have to remember <clears throat> sympatric speciation involves the emergence of a new species within the geographic range of the parent population we already discussed so i don't want to repeat it again and again uh, and one more thing we studied that instant uh, speciation so polyploidy uh, in the plants as i told you in animals polyploidy normally will not survive it is uh, it's fatal or lethal so polyploidy condition will become lethal in uh, animals but whereas in case of plants polyploidy 
will be retained by the uh, species or members and sometimes uh, it, if it is advantageous then that uh, polyploidy will be retained in the nature so that uh, is the best example for instant speciation hybridization and polyploidy have formed many vigorous crop species uh, as i i think i already explained it in my one of my previous sessions how the hybridization experiments and polyploidy experiments were done with the crop plants to increase the yield right so all of you are familiar with the green revolution which occurred in india and one of the most important product of green revolution is the wheat production so increase in the wheat production and uh, increased wheat production was achieved mainly due to the creation of polyploid i already mentioned you so what the wheat which we have now is uh, hexaploid right so that hexaploid wheat uh, produces larger grains more number of grains per plant than the natural diploid uh, plant so uh, like this polyploidy is uh, the one which will result in speciation and humans have used it to improve the crops and in environmental i mean in animals environmental complexity may lead to sympatric speciation so this one we already uh, studied uh, remember the topic is so extensive say for example uh, i think we didn't discuss about the environmental factors which lead to the reproductive isolation of course there are so many environmental factors which will uh, uh, result in the reproductive isolation in animals and ultimately leading to the speciation so that's about a brief revision of what we already studied in the previous session about the role of isolating mechanisms in speciation so two important uh, isolating mechanisms you remember one is geographical isolate uh, isolating mechanisms or geographical barriers so they will lead to speciation and uh, reproductive barriers also lead to speciation so these are the two important factors which will lead to speciation so that's all for uh, this particular session, uh, session of speciation thank you